everyone, it's Julian. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to make French deep micro house in the style of John Ray, DJ Stew, and Vaha. As usual, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video. It's available right at the top of the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. Alright, so, we're at 125 BPM, a little bit slower than other micro and minimal house stuff, but, you know, it gives it a more chill, sort of atmospheric vibe, and it's still not too slow. And the first thing up here are all these little chord stabs, which sound like this. So, the reason why I'm showing these all together is because you see, you know, none, none of these in particular is doing just something on its own. They're all working together, and it's about the way these are all grooving together. It's like, when you just hear these on their own, it already gives you so much. So you can see how the track has so much energy, because it's this, plus all this percussion and hi-hats and stuff. And yeah, like, you can really see it too, because I left the MIDI in a way where you can see what's happening. You know, it's really, like, these will play, and then this one plays. And then this one plays, like, right after, like, nothing's really overlapping. There's a little bit of overlap there, but that sounds good. I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, it's just, like, super clean, and then everything is just fitting together really nicely. <laughs> So I'll just go down the line here. Here's the first one. So for chords, basically what this is doing is we're in the key of C sharp minor. So if you look at this, you can see it's actually just like a C sharp minor. We have another C sharp there. Uh, so yeah, it's literally just like a C sharp minor chord. With a C sharp minor chord on top of it. And then this is actually the same chord. Where you can see it's just the C sharp and... Or just the E and the G sharp. And then I put the G sharp down an octave. And then there's another one. And then here. We're using the ninth. It's this... Because you can see our minor third here is E. The ninth is always just one note down from the minor third. So we're just doing that. So yeah, you can see, you know, simple stuff, just playing with the notes that are in the actual chord, which is the key of the track. And then for the sound on this one, so this first one and second one are really similar. You can see the MIDI is actually very similar as well. They're kind of playing the same chords, just in different arrays. And you can see these are both being made in really similar ways. It's different styles of synthesis, so for the first one you can see we have FM inside of operator here. It's just two sine waves. That's what creates the sound, you know, pretty simple. But then you can see same deal as with that other chord, you know, it's just all going into a low pass filter with a nice quick punchy envelope on it. And then you can see the same thing with the second one, where the second one is just two saw waves here, but then they're going into a bandpass filter, which has an envelope on it. And something also that you can see with these, is on both of these, I have this frequency to key turned up. So really what that, all that means is it's key tracking. Basically, the lower the note is, the lower the filter frequency will be, the higher the note is, the higher the filter frequency will be. And it's especially good when you're doing all this jumping around the octaves here with these chords because you get kind of different timbres. You know, this is a lot more dynamic if the filter is set differently for each chord. So, yeah, definitely recommend playing with that. It's a big part of how we make these really dynamic. And then you can see, for effects, they're both pretty similar. We just got some chorus, a bit of echo and reverb, and some drum bus. And then same thing with the second one, you know, just kind of giving it some space and then fattening it up. And then for this third chord, this one's a lot more like, quote unquote, reverby. So this is meant to just be like a nice ambient chord. You have like the fast ones. And then they're contrasted by this long. 
you know, that's the idea is to have different ones doing different things versus just having this be another one of those fast, you know, filter modulation chords like you were hearing with those other ones. The notes for this one is the same thing where it's just a C sharp minor chord with another C sharp minor chord on top of it. And this one's made with analog. It's actually kind of similar to where you can see it's just a saw wave and a square wave here going into a bandpass filter with an envelope. So again, just that same nice plucky filter sound. The amp envelopes like that. And then you can also see we just have a bit of chorus and reverb and echo and drum bus on this one. And this one also has a high pass filter. And you can see we have a pretty long echo and reverb. So again, it's all about really just how we have the other ones that are a lot more bouncy and fast. And then we just get this long reverbed out one. And then the last chord stab is this one. And yeah, you can see this one is also just doing stuff with that C-sharp minor chord. Just, you know, by spreading it out across the octaves, it really makes it feel big and lush. And that's really what you want with this style. So the way this one's made is it's another just simple sound where this one's two square waves detuned going into a low pass filter which has an envelope and it also has an LFO so that's moving it around. But then on top of that we're moving the filter frequency, we're automating it. So that's how we get these little like... You know and it's just a very dynamic sound and you can also hear this one really grooves off of the other one. You know, listen to how it sounds in the mix if we turn that off. Like, it works fine, but it's a lot better. When you have that little... Happen right in the middle there. So you want to think about that. Like, yeah, it's not just about having four chord stabs. It's the fact that two of them are kind of playing one pattern. The third one is super ambient and reverbed out. And then this fourth one just really ties the groove home. And yeah, you can see after that... After the synth, we just have a bit of chorus, a bit of reverb, giving it some space, some more drum bus, and a high pass filter. And that is it for the chord stabs. They're really important in the style, you know, it's a big part, I think, of what makes these tracks unique and what makes them, like, really lush and full like this. And that's how you do them. The next thing we have here is the percussion. So you can hear the percussion's pretty straightforward, all things considered. It's just about having like enough stuff. Like if you listen. You know, it's all grooving off of each other. And by having this little like. Every single time with the percussions and then having like these two hit on the upbeats every time. You know, it kind of creates its own groove. It's just like with the chords. It's like we're just creating grooves between these different elements and these different sort of like places where the elements are sitting. You know, having this one be percussion, having the other one be kind of more melodic stuff. And then we're putting all those different groups of grooves together. And yeah, on the group of the percussion, we just have some drum bus just to tie it all home, you know. You really don't need a whole lot. You can hear there's without it and with it. It's not doing the most, but what it's doing is it's just kind of fattening it all up a little bit and really giving it a more even texture so that all the percussion feels like it's in the same place. Then we have the hi-hats. Also, the hi-hats, you can see, are pretty straightforward. So we have our main hi-hat, which is two layers. It's this one. With this shaker, just to make it, like, really big and full. And then that's playing with this 808 hat. So you can see, I just shortened that, put some reverb on it. And then you put those together, and you get a nice, like, airy bright hi-hat that still has a lot of punch to it. You can still get that ch -ch -ch coming through the mix. Then we just have like our 
16th note hi hat that's going through a bit of reverb as well and then we also have this one and this kind of goes back to what i was doing with the percussion where it's like you know it's simple but it's just the fact that we have this every single time that <laughs> and just the fact that like you can always rely on that being in the same place and then on the group of hi-hats, we just have a bit of saturation. So same deal as the percussion, you know, it doesn't need a whole lot if you already have pretty fat sounds that are, you know, really full sounding. But it's just kind of like tying it all together. Then we have our kick. Which in this style, you really just want this like nice fat... 909 style kick you know it's just like a really nice round housey kick like this so and this is just going through a bit of drum buzz here's without it and you can hear how that's essential it just gives it that nice like kind of glue to really even out the kick and make it feel really full and the last layer down here is the bass line So the bass line is playing this nice simple melody. Turn off the filter so you can hear that. So it's like this nice kind of syncopated part you can hear, you know, just... It's just grooving along nicely in the low end. If we play it with the kick... You know, it really just moves that low end along and keeps things going. And it's really simple. It's just in the key of C sharp minor. Nothing really too out of the ordinary. It's just about creating something nice and simple that's going to really groove like this. And then for the sound, it's a really simple sound too. It's just this fat sine wave inside of operator here with a little bit of FM from the second sine wave. And then I have a low pass filter on there, which just kind of like helps to even out the frequency range and makes it so that the low end isn't going to be too too quiet because sometimes what can happen is you will have like a little bit of mid range especially with those higher notes and then the higher notes will be way louder and the low end will be too quiet but this way it all just kind of evens out and then we just have some drum bus on that and a bit of EQ to cut out a little bit of space for the kick and then the low end bus here, so I just have the kick and bass going through a little bit of saturation, not much at all, it's literally just 3.57 dB, here's without it. And with it, so this is just that last thing to really tie the low end together and make it feel like it's kind of all in the same box. And yeah, that is going to be it for this one guys. So I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets. All of that from this video is available at the top of the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much to everybody who goes and grabs this on my Bandcamp. It really supports me and helps keep me going. So I can keep bringing you guys new videos every day. And yeah, thank you so much guys. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.